Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A grim new warning from the CDC, upwards of 23,000 deaths over the next three weeks from coronavirus. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. I'll have details on that, plus an update on the fight for a vaccine. Take a look outside with live cam 4, 30, 65 degrees, feels lovely outside. How long will this stick around for? Michael, let us know in just a bit. And good morning to you. We made it to Friday. It is the 25th of September. Good morning. It, it's, it is Friday. I'm excited about that. And it felt really nice outside. And I was just like, oh, will this stick around this weekend? We sure hope so. Although I suspect we may go Mike upwards is, Mike is temperature shake, wise. Is shaking his head. No, it, the next couple of mornings are not going to be quite as low. We've got, you know, some 50s out there as well. But. We but. are looking at a cold front next week, so. and the confidence is getting a little bit higher and the earlier arrival of it than what it had initially looked like, too. First of all, uh, you look outside and I don't know if it's a little bit out of focus there, a little bit of kind of some fuzz around the, the lights. Got some mid 50s in parts of the hill country. Bernie stage is at 55, 58, Balverde, 65 here in town. Yeah, really nice, as Sarah was talking about, and that's because the dew points are very low. However, in many spots, these numbers are running neck and neck with the actual air temperatures. And so that's why we're starting to see a little bit of fog around some places. Nothing is showing up in the metropolitan area, maybe a hint there in Castroville, but look it off here to the east and we've got some fog being reported around Gonzales as well as Victoria. So we'll have to kind of keep a, an eye out for that this morning because with the clear skies, that's allowing temperatures to drop down. And as they get near those dew points, that's one of the reasons why we get some fog to form up. Ragweed moderate mold is on the, uh, the low side. Nice warm up throughout the day. 82 at noon, 89 for a high temperature, which means toward the Rio Grande Valley, there's going to be uh, some 90 degree readings out there. It's going to get even hotter this weekend than that front. It's right around the corner. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Friday morning and Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. All right, no accidents right now to report. A little bit of construction. The usual construction here eastbound IH-10 at Dominion Drive. Looks like the eastbound main lanes of I-10 are shut down starting at Dominion. Hopefully this construction clears very soon. Taking a look at transit guide right now, we got 37 at Goliad. I don't know what we're looking at right there. Here we go. Let's see what else we have here. Oh my goodness. There we go. 37 at Hackberry looking good. 37 at Southeast Military looking better. And I-10 at Medical flowing very smoothly. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Nick, thank you. New overnight, about 100 demonstrators gathered in Louisville, Kentucky, defying a nighttime curfew, marking a second night of protests regarding the Breonna Taylor shooting death. Police in riot gear can be seen blocking streets during demonstrations. People in crowd chanted, some protesters blocking streets as they marched. There was no immediate sign of a confrontation, but at least one person with a hatchet tried to smash the window of a Louisville business. In California, at least one person was taken to a hospital after a truck drove through a protest in Los Angeles. In the latest local coronavirus numbers here at home, there's a slight increase in the number of COVID-19 patients in the hospital. 231 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. That's three more compared to the previous report. 87 people are in the ICU and 36 are in ventilators. That's down by five. 177 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed along with five new deaths in the community. All those happened within the last two weeks. The death toll now sits at 1,073 people. Well, when it comes to testing for COVID-19, Metro Health says because of CDC guidance, they do not count positive antigen tests from people who do not show symptoms. However, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the health department is one of the few in the state tracking asymptomatic cases. He says there have been 368 cases without symptoms since August. Well, meanwhile, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now predicts up to 23,000 Americans could die from COVID-19 over the next three weeks. At the same time, a debate in Washington is brewing over politics and a vaccine. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Heading into the weekend, a grim new forecast from the CDC. As many as 23,000 more coronavirus deaths by October 17th. 33 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico are seeing an increase in cases, including New York, where they're particularly concerned about the upcoming Jewish High Holy Days and Colorado, where the city of Boulder has taken the drastic step of banning gatherings of any size for 18 to 22 year olds, following a surge in cases at a university there. 
In the nation's capital, after touting a coronavirus vaccine by Election Day, President Trump is now threatening to reject stricter FDA safety standards that could slow the release of a vaccine, once again undermining his own health officials. Well, I tell you what, we're looking at that. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. Dr. Anthony Fauci coming to the FDA's defense. I need to rely on an organization that I have trusted and have done very, very well for decades, and that's the FDA. So if they come out and say, this is the way we should do it, I got your back on that. The FDA declined to comment on the president's threat, but testifying on Capitol Hill this week, the FDA commissioner was adamant. Our thorough review processes and science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone to change that. And with concerns that the White House is injecting politics into the pandemic response, six states and D.C. have now announced plans to review vaccine data independently. Like everything else in this country, uh, it's it's uh, partisan and it's questioned and there's controversy about it. And overseas, France is now seeing a record increase in daily cases. Britain is seeing an all time high in new infections. And in Finland, officials are using dogs at airports to sniff out passengers that might be infected. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Good home and this morning, latest on two planes that crashed or bought rather planes that were involved in a crash at the San Marcos Regional Airport. Just after seven last night, authorities say planes collided as they were trying to land. Both those plane, planes flipped. Another caught fire. Two men in one aircraft were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The pilot of the other plane was not hurt and remained on scene. DPS and the National Transportation Safety Board are now investigating. Well, it's 437 and 65 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at how dogs are being trained to identify positive coronavirus patients who may not be showing any symptoms. 65 degrees outside on your Friday morning. So if you're getting up early, maybe take a cup of coffee outside. But this, these cool temperatures, they may not stick around. But Mike will let us know about a second cold front when we come back. Friday morning, welcome back to GMSA. It's 440, also making headlines today. President Trump's refusal to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election is drawing swift blowback from both parties in Congress. President Trump said he is not sure if the election will be honest. Congressional leaders, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, rejected President Trump's assertion that he'll, quote, see what happens before agreeing to any election outcome. The president's statements on the upcoming vote comes as we get closer to Election Day. This is more Americans than ever are planning to vote by mail because of the coronavirus pandemic. Well, South Korea says North Korean leader Kim Jong Un has apologized over the killing of a South Korean official. South Korea's presidential office cited Kim as calling the incident, quote, unexpected and, quote, unfortunate. It's extremely unusual for the North Korean leader to apologize to rival South Korea on any issue. Yesterday, South Korea accused North Korea of shooting and killing one of its public servants who was likely trying to defect. The North is accused of burning his body after finding him on a floating object in North Korean waters earlier this week. South Korean officials condemned North Korea for what they called a quote, an atrocious act and pressed to punish those responsible. It's 441, 65 degrees at San Antonio International. Well, some chairs from HEB are being recalled along with some popular power tools. We'll have more details just ahead. And next, we'll look at how dogs are now being trained to sniff out asymptomatic coronavirus patients. Dogs are being trained to sniff out those who may be positive for the coronavirus and not even know it. ABC's Gio Bonitas has that in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, call them COVID canines. Finland's Helsinki airport says these dogs are trained to sniff out COVID-19. 
Now, here's how the airport says the trial works. A traveler will swipe their skin with a wipe. It's put in a jar, and in a second room, a dog will sniff it. The trainers in Finland say the dog will have an answer in just 10 seconds. Though it may be different in the real world, something American doctors are looking at, too. Because even lab-run COVID tests can produce false positives or false negatives. We're starting to look at if dogs can detect an odor associated associated with COVID-19. So will dogs like these ever be used at airports here in America? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what officials here are saying right now. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. From power yard tools to bicycles, hundreds of thousands of household products are being pulled from the market for safety reasons. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris has our rec recall roundup. Before you tackle the landscaping, check your saws. First Cobalt is recalling 150,000 chainsaws sold at Lowe's for the past six years. These are 12-inch cordless electric chainsaws. The problem? They can remain in the on position, posing a risk of serious injury. Cobalt is also recalling more than 100,000 pole saws, also cordless, electric, and sold at Lowe's. The saw may continue running even after the trigger is released. Electric bikes are all the buzz. Now thousands of these are recalled. Pedigo is pulling six models because a defective electrical cable can cause the bicycle to accelerate unexpectedly. Contact a dealer for a repair. Hit the brakes on these bikes too. Specialized Bicycle Components is recalling thousands of its Cirrus models. The alloy crank arm can disengage and the rider can lose control. Injuries from a torn bicep to road rash have been reported. And did you buy one of these chairs from HEB? Caravan Global is recalling these blue fold-up sports chairs. The fabric can rip apart from the frame. HEB sold these last May. You can contact Caravan Global and get your money back. If you need more information about any of those recalls, just head on over to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 446, let's check on traffic, see how things are looking out there. I heard you on the phone earlier trying to get some updates. Nick, what's going on? Yeah, things are looking good right now. Uh, accident wise, a lot of green there on the screen, just dealing with a little bit of construction that we've done with all week. This is an eastbound IH10 at Dominion. Highway is closed down from Dominion Drive and on there. Um, However, it might be cleared up by 5 a.m. today, hopefully, so keep you updated on that. Taking a look at Trans Guide right now, this is 1604 at Old Hausman. This is looking great there on the northwest side, flowing very smoothly. Traffic looks great right now, so if you are headed to work, going that direction, um, you know, expect a smooth commute. We shall. Thank you very much, Nick. And it's again kind of coolish out there this morning. Not bad, Mike. Yeah, we're just uh, ever so slightly below normal, and I think we may drop down a couple of more degrees. But what we have to watch out for, though, too, is a little bit of fog. Fog. Yeah, there's some around uh, Gonzales uh, off to the east, and then further to the east of there, a couple of uh, patches of fog. Beautiful view, and it's always great when the uh, the moon obviously rises, sun is still up, and you can just barely see it there. And it is just uh, just about halfway because the uh, full moon is next Thursday on the 1st of October. Very cool picture. I love that. And what's interesting, I know it's not a blue moon, but with this blue background on the 31st of October will be the blue moon, the second full moon of the calendar month. So we've got uh, yeah, a nice start this morning, but it looks like there's a little fuzz around some of the... Uh, some of the lights out there because humidity levels are relative to the temperatures kind of high. Like I said, there is a little bit of fog being reported around Gonzales and Victoria. High temperatures later on today. We're looking at the upper 80s. We were mid upper ish 80s yesterday, so a little bit warmer today. Humidity is still going to be somewhat in check because the uh, heat index readings are going to be about what the air temperatures are. So we're looking at these dew point temperatures, which are nice right now and they'll be dropping down somewhat in the afternoon. However, going into the weekend, that's not going to be the situation. Dew points are going to remain high in the afternoon. As a matter of fact, go up a little bit. That's Saturday and Sunday. Then look at what happens Monday, Tuesday in the middle part of next week. Dew points drop down. Here's the roller coaster action with those numbers and also with other temperatures because we've got another front moving on through here. So as far as temperatures right now, it's not like there's anything jumping off the map necessarily up there to the north of us, but as we go into next week, and I want to just jump ahead to Sunday, and you can see some of this cooler air up here starting to work its way south, and this will continue to come down in here, and then it looks like the front's going to be moving through 
about timing right now, say about seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning on Monday and then temperatures. So we'll start off kind of mild on Monday. As a matter of fact, with low temperatures going up over the weekend, staying in the upper 60s, low 70s, and then temperatures won't warm up all that much throughout the day. I'm looking at this has us at uh, 75 degrees right around noontime, thinking maybe 80, perhaps even staying in the upper 70s once we get into the afternoon hours of Monday. So a nice taste of fall is coming in here after a pretty warm first weekend of fall. 82 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, good looking day, and then a high temperature up to 89. So about a degree or two above normal. Not bad, but it does get warmer this weekend with that uh, Humidity coming back in here as well. Look at the low temperature staying in the upper 60s and close to 70. Cold front moves through Monday. It will be kind of breezy and it will be delightful next week. Best way to put it. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm, I was soaking in the word delightful. Yes. I was like, wow, he means it. He's smiling. He's making eye contact. <laughs> okay, I get Not it. tricking us this time. Right, right. <laughs> like some of this cold front stuff, he's like, doo, doo, doo. It's like a three-year-old in trouble. So 450, 65 degrees. Up next, actor Jeff Daniels talks about his portrayal of former FBI chief James Comey in a new movie debuting on Showtime. But first, we have all your lottery numbers, starting with pick three, zero, seven, six, fireball six, daily Four, nine, three, five, three, fireball six. Cash five, seven, eleven, fourteen, twenty-four, twenty-eight. Texas two step one, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-two. Bonus ball seven. Stumped on what to do this weekend? Well, lots of new movies and shows are now streaming as we head into the weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Russia, we think they're trying to sabotage Secretary Clinton's campaign. Jeff Daniels hopes his portrayal of former FBI chief James Comey makes you think a little harder about this year's election. I hope the Comey rule will be one of the things that informs you that maybe maybe we need to be paying a little bit more closer attention to what's about to happen on November 3rd. The Comey Rule, based off Comey's book, A Higher Loyalty, premieres Sunday night on Showtime with part two airing Monday. They're going to war with us. Also this weekend, the wait for Fargo is over with the premiere of the first new season since 2017. Show creator Noah Hawley tells me he wanted to take a long, hard look at America's relationship to money. And if he was going to do that. You know, we need to look at the original sins of capitalism in America, which are, you know, slavery and the exploitation of free and cheap labor. Fargo season four stars Chris Rock in air Sunday night on FX. Speaking of Chris Rock, he'll host the season premiere of Saturday Night Live a week from this Saturday with musical guest Megan the Stallion. You told me keep it real, but you don't practice what you preach. And happy birthday, Donald Glover, the award-winning actor and rapper, is 37 today. This is America. While groundbreaking journalist Barbara Walters is 91. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Five till right now, 65 degrees. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, President Trump is facing some concerns from both sides of the political aisle after he recently commented that he's not sure if the election will be, quote, honest. Plus, Amazon and Ring have a new way to keep an eye on your home from above. Details coming up in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, Governor Greg Abbott proposing new measures to combat riots here in Texas following protests in Kentucky and around the country. Plus, the latest from the 2020 campaign trail a recent, as recent comments from President Donald Trump are drawing swift blowback from both parties in Congress. We made it to the end of the week. First full weekend of fall 2020. Mike says a warm up and then Another cool down, pretty typical for this time of year. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, the 25th of September. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I put on long sleeves this morning. I noticed. I was feeling, well, I'm, I'm cold, you know, anything below 70. But I was like, ooh, this feels nice outside. It does feel. It's not exactly crisp, but Mike says, hang on. Some more crisp feeling 
air might be headed this way. Yep. Yesterday you were showing us kind of pooling up there in Canada headed south. Yeah, it's not as though there's this huge, you know, blob of cold air coming on in here, but we are going to get a nice break from the humidity as well as the very, very warm temperatures because even though this morning starting off really nice and it's going to be nice in the afternoon, it's going to be a warm weekend. It's going to be kind of a humid weekend. We've got some 50s in the hill country again, 65 here in town, which is actually just a couple of notches below normal dew points at 61. Not much of a breeze out there in clear skies. And with that ingredient, even though the temperature and the dew point aren't all that close together, what we're going to have to watch out for, and I'm going to show you this in a second, is a little bit of fog. The aquifer dropped down slightly yesterday, and as far as the allergens, ragweed is moderate and mold is on the low side. So again, with dew points, temperatures getting kind of close to each other. We're going to be on the lookout for some fog this morning. There's not a lot showing up in the metropolitan area right now. Maybe a hint of it around Castroville. However, you go off to the east. Gonzales has actually improved a little bit just in the past uh, about half an hour, but Victoria is still just a half mile visibility. So we have to watch out. And a lot of times with the fog, it does tend to get thicker as we head in toward uh, right around sunrise. So just about 6 30, 7 o'clock, right around in there, we may see some of this fog trying to thicken up a little bit of it down there at Beeville as well. So, a couple of clouds this morning, coolish, pleasant, nice this afternoon. We're going to be in the upper 80s, so at or maybe even a little bit above normal. Humidity will still be okay. Then we get into the weekend, sunny, low 90s, and we are going to have some humidity around here. That's all going to be going away just about this time Monday morning. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Salise. Anything big out there? Not right now, Mike. Things are looking good right now. We got a lot of green on the screen. Looks like this construction on eastbound I-10 is about cleared up there. Uh, just picking those barrels up, but it should be cleared here any minute now. I, I know they were going till about 5 a.m., but uh, I'll call my buddy at Transguide C when we can get official time when they do clear that up. Drive times eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. And if you're on 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So really good times there. OK, Transguide right now. We're taking a look at 35 at Ben's Engelman right now. I believe these are the southbound lanes of 35 and things are flowing smoothly there. So if you're heading in this direction on the way to work, expect to be driving like this guy right now. You're going to be driving smooth. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting overnight that sent a man to the hospital. It happened just before midnight in the 4300 block of Avena Avenida Prima. That's on the northeast side, just north of Warsbach Parkway. SAPD says a man was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. The victim told police he was walking near Almo Blanco when he was shot. Right now, police say they don't have a description of the suspect and officers could not find a crime scene. Just 39 days until Election Day. President Trump campaigning in a battleground state while Joe Biden picks up endorsements. All this comes as the president faces pushback from Congress over his refusal to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, President Trump on the campaign trail in Florida, rallying supporters in Jacksonville. Uh, we're unified. But in Washington, unanswered questions and growing concern after the president refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. His press secretary was asked for clarification. But, but uh, I have a very works. direct and very simple question. If the president loses this election, will this White House, will this president assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? It's a very simple question. The, the, president, since, uh, the president will accept the results of a free and fair election. But President Trump once again stoking doubt about the fairness of the election. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. I don't, I don't know that it can be. But we have to be very careful with the ballots. The ballots, that's a whole big scam. Democrats on the attack. That may be what his friend Putin does in Russia. You are not in North Korea. You are not in Turkey. You are in the United States of America. It is a democracy. Republicans also speaking out. We've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington was selected for a second term in 1792. The Senate unanimously passing a resolution Thursday reaffirming its commitment to a peaceful transition after the election. The FBI director told Congress there's been no evidence of widespread voter fraud. We have not seen historically uh, any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort uh, in a major election, uh, whether it's by mail or, or otherwise. 
Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, closer to home, following last night's protests, not only in Kentucky, but around the nation, Governor Greg Abbott is proposing new measures for Texas. If passed by lawmakers in 2021, the measures would create felony level offenses for causing injury or destroying property during what is deemed, quote, a riot. Blocking hospital entrances using lasers or striking officers would also see an increase in punishment. Governor Abbott also proposed a new felony charge for people who may not be present during the riots, but may aid and abet riots with funds or organizational assistance. New data from Texas Education Agency showing the number of COVID-19 cases in public schools. The TEA says there are over 6,000 cumulative cases across the state for students and staff. Locally, San Antonio ISD has one student case, 16 among staff. Northeast ISD reported 11 cases among students and 14 among staff. Northside reported nine student cases, 35 staff cases. While some teachers are concerned, Metro Health's director says the numbers are actually pretty encouraging. All of the students in that class exposed all of the teachers. Uh, to me, that's really dangerous. It is maybe not as, as high a risk to go into a school as, as some people had feared at the beginning of all this. Oh. The city announced their own tally as Metro Health comes through data. So far, Metro Health confirmed 20 students and 32 staff cases in the San Antonio area. Well, it's now fall and with it marks the start of another season where we are still dealing with the pandemic. And as it continues, despite the reopenings, doctors say there is still a threat to the public's mental health. Local psychiatrist Harry Croft says people have been generally more irritable and more frustrated due to the isolation and the threat of the flu season could only make those feelings worse. Dr. Croft says we are fortunate in South Texas because our fall and winter seasons are not dark and dreary, so there aren't as many cases of seasonal affective disorder. However, he says if you have a past history of it, be sure to reach out to your doctor to help you through it. We've got a traffic alert starting tonight. Crews will have some road closures on Wurzbach Parkway because of the new land bridge construction project. Here's a map of that area. Wurzbach Parkway will be closed between Northwest Military Highway and Blanco Road from 9 tonight all the way through 5 o'clock Monday morning. We hope they wrap up earlier, but it could be again that long. Same closure takes place the following weekend, so crews can remove concrete forms under the land bridge itself. A new EMT program at Edison High School is offering a new career to, opportunity to its seniors. The new course offered is called Emergency Medical Technician Basic. There are 17 students enrolled in it now. Deborah Ramirez, a retired firefighter, says with the uh, firefighter paramedic will be helping out with skills training. Students will learn how to care for all types of patients. They'll be learning trauma care. You know, working with um, patients that stabbings, shootings, uh, car accidents, but they'll also be learning how to care for patients who are maybe having a heart attack, severe respiratory distress. They may be going out on COVID patients when they graduate. I want to get experience and um, figure out what I want to do. And I think this is like a great step because it uh, leads to a certification. Ramirez says this opportunity will open many doors for students. The course officially starts on October 5th. 508, 65 degrees. Well, still ahead, Amazon is introducing a new kind of surveillance device that can stream to your smartphone. And next, the FDA issues a warning as it investigates reports of injuries and deaths linked to a TikTok challenge. Take a look outside. 65 degrees feels lovely this morning at 508 a.m. There may be a second cool front coming around, but not this weekend. Michael, let us know when we come back. In your morning consumer headlines, a TikTok challenge has led to an FDA investigation. The federal agency says it is looking into reports of teens participating in the so-called Benadryl challenge. The over-the-counter medication is used to treat allergies. Teenagers in the challenge are encouraged to take large doses of the drug. According to the FDA, teens have reportedly ended up in the emergency rooms with some serious injuries and some have even died. The FDA warns that taking too much Benadryl can lead to severe health problems and even death. It says it contacted TikTok and is urging the app to remove videos of the challenge from its platform. 
Target is already gearing up for the holiday season. The retailer says as new plans for its employees, it expects to see an increase in contactless shopping during the holidays. Target says it's going to double the number of team members devoted to drive up and order pickup compared to last year. Also, distribution centers will hire more seasonal workers. There will also be more employees at the front of Target stores to focus on safety, cleaning, and greeting guests. Well, Krispy, Krispy Kreme has proclaimed today as Sports Spirit Day. In its honor, the donut chain is offering a deal to sports fans. Krispy Kreme says it's selling a dozen of its original glazed donuts for $5. But that's only if you're wearing some kind of gear representing your favorite sports team. The chain says it can be anything from a jersey or t-shirt to a complete team uniform. It can also be team gloves, helmets, or hats. A dozen for $5. <laughs> Just where you get, get your gear ready. Yeah. 513, 65 degrees. Still ahead, Twitter is introducing a new way to reduce the spread of misinformation. And next, first look at brand new home surveillance drone that streams video to your smartphone. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines with Trelegy. The only FDA approved once daily three in one COPD treatment. Trelegy, the power of one, two, three. Trelegy, one, two, three. Trelegy. With Trelegy and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trelegy works three ways to open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trelegy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trelegy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelegy more than prescribed. Trelegy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Think your COPD medicine is doing enough? Maybe you should think again. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy. We know times are hard, and we're here for you. Find support at Trilogy.com. 516, it's a new way to keep an eye on your home from above. ABC's Mono Kostar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, flying security indoors. The new Always Home Cam is a drone designed to fly around your home. It's from Ring, the security business owned by Amazon. The drone streams video to your phone so you can see if there's a problem. Price tag? around $250. Soon, all Twitter users will see a prompt asking them to consider reading an article before retweeting it. Twitter says users open articles 40% more often after seeing the prompt. When it goes global, Twitter hopes to make the prompt smaller on the screen. And finally, Apple is changing its policy on ill-fitting watch bands. Before the policy change, people who bought the wrong size had to return the entire watch, but customers complained. So now Apple says it will allow bands to be swapped out online. Ask and you shall receive. Steve. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. It's now 517 on your Friday morning. Officer Nick, how are the roads looking? Right now, things are looking good. Construction's getting cleared up there on I-10, and we got a lot of green on the screen. Had just had an accident pop up right there. Looks like I-10 eastbound around the Hurman area. Get you some more information on that. Uh, but other than that, things are looking good around the city. Let's jump straight to Trans Guide right now at I-10 in Callahan. Look at that east and westbound lanes flowing very smoothly there at I-10 right now. Traffic is picking up a little bit, so just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. Thank you, Nick. Mike's got an awesome KSAT Connect picture for us this I morning. I know, you got some good, good doggies. I love how these two are posing right there. Big dogs doing big fishing. They're, it's like they're security guards they're, they're, for those fishing poles. <laughs> Surf uh, shark fishing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, uh, they're just so attentive. Objects may be larger than they appear, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> uh, probably so. I yeah, they're, they're, big, they're Great Danes, man. I know. Yeah, I know. massive. They're huge. So but thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Hey, we've got a nice start again this morning. Temperatures are pleasant, not too awfully warm or humid. Yesterday, of course, we had a lot of sunshine out there. There was maybe that little bit of a milky shade at times, and we're seeing a slight bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. See how that kind of grayish uh, little tinge kind of moves on in here. So perhaps not that extreme, perfect, vivid blue sky, but still really darn nice again today. Plenty of sunshine out there and uh, nothing is really going on around here and not much around the country. There's actually the remnants of what was uh, Tropical Storm Beta that moved on in here. And then up to the north, as you can see, there's not a lot going on either. But notice this band of clouds. We're 
you know, the, the kind of roller coaster action that we like to see in the upper level steering winds this time of year, that's starting to form up up there. So what's going to be going on? First of all, uh, most noticeably is temperatures tomorrow morning. We're going to be instead of kind of mid 60s, low 60s, we're going to be staying in the upper 60s around here and there's going to be that's due to more humidity and the more humidity in the afternoon. So yeah, it is going to be a kind of a warm first weekend of fall and then going into Sunday. Uh, we'll eventually get up into the low 90s. This is right around mid afternoon, but watch how this somewhat cooler air and this is not some Arctic blast by any means, but this cooler air is going to continue to drop down to the south and that's going to be working its way on in here. We will start off on the mild side Monday morning but that cooler air will then continue to filter in throughout the day. So that'll hold us at 80, maybe even just upper 70s in some locations on Monday. So here's what's going on. You saw in the national map, those clouds that were kind of lined up right here, right along that main flow of the jet stream. And then that's going to be the situation through the weekend it starts to bend a little bit by Saturday and Sunday. And then it really takes a dive down here overnight Sunday into Monday. And that's as that front is going to be moving on through here. Timing right now looks like it's going to be about seven, eight o'clock in the morning. So like I said, we start off on the mild side and then wind's going to shift around to the north, kind of breezy as well. And it's going to be beautiful throughout the day on Monday. And that's going to remain for most of the week. So we're going to have some nice temperatures and those morning low temperatures are going to be coolish, even more coolish than what they have in the past couple of days. 82 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. And later on today, 89 for high temperature. Humidity is going to be okay today. Then we get into the weekend and humidity comes back in here and that helps to hold those low temperatures up about normal or above that for lows. And then we get into the low 90s Saturday, Sunday and then Monday after that front moves on through here. Pretty darn nice. 59. That's that's yeah. chilly. Yeah, we'll take a pair of those. Which when you then, that's here in town, hill country, mm -hmm. take off, what, 7, 10 degrees off of that perhaps? Fantastic. Break out the parkas. <laughs> I don't know about parkas, but. It's being a little dramatic, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's all right. 6 to 521, 65 degrees. Well, up next, the son of, Dare, of Daredevil Evil Knievel is suing Disney over a character in Toy Story 4. We'll have Disney's response to the lawsuit. Your pick three numbers are 076 Fireball 6, Daily 4, 9353 3, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 7, 11, 14, 24, 28, Texas 2, Step 1, 15, 18, 22, Bonus Ball 7. In this morning's movie news, one film inspired tattoos, another has inspired a lawsuit. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in the Hollywood Minute. The first trailer is out for Sound of Metal, starring Riz Ahmed as a drummer whose career, relationship, and identity are threatened when he begins losing his hearing. The drama, which features deaf actors as deaf characters, opens in select theaters November 20th and on Prime Video December 4th. Okay, ready? Everyone, say right. cheese. I think so. Emma Toller! Emmentaler. <laughs> it may sound cheesy, but Rain Wilson says the ensemble cast of Blackbird grew extremely close during filming. It was an incredible experience, so incredible that we all got matching tattoos of, of a Blackbird. It's my Blackbird tattoo. Everyone in the cast got one, including the director, uh, because we just had such a beautiful, intimate sharing experience doing this film. I'm through Kaboom. Oh, man. I can do this. Yes, you can, Ada. I can do it with my eyes closed. Yes, you what? Three, two, one, go! If you saw the Toy Story 4 character Duke Kaboom and thought Evil Knievel, you weren't alone. Knievel's son is suing Disney and Pixar for improperly basing the character on his famous stuntman father. Kelly Knievel says he owns publicity rights to his late father's likeness. A Disney rep issued a statement calling the claims meritless. Stay tuned. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Moving right along on a Friday morning, 526, 65 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, President Trump appears ready to present a new health care plan to the American public. We'll have a preview. And the latest from Louisville, Kentucky, as protests continue overnight in response to the grand jury's decision not to indict any of the officers in the death of Breonna Taylor. Plus, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, a local comedian shares his story and speaks about his battle with cancer. Good morning, rise and shine. It is Friday, the 25th of September. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And it is 65 degrees. Mike, uh, you were saying it's going to warm up this weekend, though. Yeah, we've had, you know, a couple of really pleasant mornings out there like this morning. And as you can see, we've got some clear skies. There is the planet Venus looking out there to the east right now. It's been uh, very nice, but the humidity is going to make a return. So kind of contrary to obviously the calendar, this is the first uh, official weekend of summer or excuse me of summer of fall, but it's going to feel like summer out there. And as far as conditions right now, as you mentioned 65 dew points at 61. That's not bad. Of course, 60 is always that threshold number that we look for. You get below that and it's pretty comfortable and there's not much wind to speak of as of right now. And so what that's doing, taking into account all that, the temperatures and dew point temperatures are getting really close in some places. We don't have anything as far as fog off to the west, but off to the east, mile and a half visibility, that's dropped down. Same thing, Victoria, it has dropped down. A little bit of fog is showing up around the Grange as well. So we'll have to watch out for that to thicken up in the next couple of hours. And right now, we've got temperatures that are in the mid-50s in parts of the hill country. Kerrville 55 53 in Fredericksburg. Just absolutely fantastic throughout the rest of today. Going to have a nice warm up this morning. We gain about 20 degrees or so between now and noon, and then we're going to be topping off at 89. So close to a normal high temperature. Clear skies tonight. Good looking evening. But again, it's not going to be quite as cool tomorrow morning nor Sunday. However, we are still looking. The confidence is getting higher as we get closer. Confidence is getting higher for a front to move through to start off next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis with a smile on his face. It's because that weather, Mike, it's perfect running weather, 89 degrees. It's oh, well, yes. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Green on the screen right now. Accident right there we had at Ice and Human is now cleared. Construction's getting cleared up there as well. Look at these drive times. Okay, if you're on I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to Sixteen oh four. You got a twelve-minute ride, and you're coming back eastbound. You got thirteen minutes, so things are looking good right now. If you're heading to work in that direction, trans guide time. This is I-10 at Callahan. Still, things are still looking very smooth there, east and westbound. Traffic is very light right now, so you should have no problem on your way to work. You got time to put gas if you're heading in this direction. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Nick. Well, a shooting on the northeast side of town seems to involve a bit of a mystery. The victim in this case told San Antonio police he has no idea where the shots even came from that hit him. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where investigators are trying to sort it all out. Good morning, Katrina. What condition is the victim in? Well, good morning. It doesn't sound like anything life threatening. Police say that he was shot in the leg and taken to a hospital for treatment. Now, the man says it was while he was using his legs, walking through a neighborhood off Thousand Oaks Drive that he was hit by the gunfire. Police found him in the 4300 block of Avenida Prima. They say he's either in his teens or early 20s. The man told them he actually was shot while he was walking on a nearby street late last night, shortly before midnight. He was rushed to a hospital by ambulance. Police say there was a woman with him at the time, but neither she nor the victim was able to offer a description of the shooter. So right now, detectives are trying to find out whatever they can to try to figure out who fired those shots. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, for more than three years, President Trump has promised to replace the Affordable Care Act. His administration has missed numerous self-imposed deadlines since 2017. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the White House hopes its latest effort won't fall to the same fate. President Trump details his health care executive orders Thursday in Charlotte, North Carolina. My plan expands affordable insurance options, reduces the cost of prescription drugs, will end surprise medical billing, increases fairness through price transparency. The president adding on Twitter that the America First health care plan offers better care by calling on Congress to pass legislation to curb surprise medical billing. By contrast, the Democrat Party is pushing a socialist nightmare, 
Their plans will result in rationing care, denying choice, putting Americans on wait lists. One of the orders aims to protect people with pre-existing conditions, something the Affordable Care Act already does. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden and his team aren't impressed. The American people are not going to fall for Trump's empty words and broken promises. They know there's only one candidate in the race who fought tooth and nail, shoulder to shoulder with President Obama to expand access to health care for more than 20 million Americans, and that's Joe Biden. Other critics of the president's plan say voters need to make their voices heard on Election Day. I have faith in the American people that when they figure out that their health care is in jeopardy with this nominee and they can stop it by one... <laughs> Raising their voices, one hopes that even Republicans will listen to their constituents. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The director of the World Health Organization says President Donald Trump's decision to pull out of the WHO will actually hurt the U.S. WHO's director told Time magazine he was surprised by the announcement and that there was no hint that the U.S. was planning a withdrawal. The move does not take effect until next July. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden says he will reverse the decision if he is elected. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is still making history even after her death. Ginsburg, who died last Friday due to complications of metastatic pancreas, pancreas cancer, will become the first woman to lie in state in the U.S. Capitol today. That's according to congressional historians. She'll also be the first Jewish person to be given that honor. Ginsburg joins Rosa Parks, John Lewis, and Abraham Lincoln as those who were laid in state or laid in honor at the Capitol. This tribute is considered one of the nation's highest honors. Lying in state is reserved for government officials and military office officers, whereas lying in honor is for private citizens. Don't forget to join us for ABC's live coverage this morning. It begins at 9 a.m. San Antonio time. U.S. Postal Service unveiled this year's crop of holiday stamps. The Holiday Delight stamp comes in four different designs. Postal Service says each one will add a touch of whimsy to your holiday mailings. The stamp art inspired by folk art and features four items that represent Christmas, a Christmas tree, uh, ornament, stuffed stocking, and a prancing reindeer. Each design is a traditional Christmas colors of red, green, and white. The Holiday Delight stamps are available nationwide. The Forever stamp costs 55 cents per stamp and $11 for a book of 20. They're cute. Christmas, it's around the corner. It is. I don't know. How many days? I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look on my app here. I'm quick. Let's see if how if I'm really that quick. Come on, here it come is. on Mark. Uh, where it is. There it is. Okay, it is 91 days. 91 days. We're yes. getting there. You're welcome, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> And he's out. Jolly, jolly guy. 537, 65 degrees. Well, still ahead for Hispanic Heritage Month, we are highlighting a local comedian who is listed as one of the 25 most influential Latinos in San Antonio. And latest on the second night of protests in Louisville over the death of Breonna Taylor. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> You're in trouble with Mike I'm, I'm in trouble with Mike. We're, what, 90, we said 91 days away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we, we still got a while. It's 65 degrees. We're happy here. Cool He's front. a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. 540. Protests in Louisville, Kentucky continued overnight despite a curfew. It's all in response to a grand jury's decision not to indict officers in the death of Breonna Taylor. CNN's Dale Forges is on the ground in Louisville with the latest. This is what democracy looks like! Unrest spilling into streets across America for a second night. The pain is palpable in this city. The rage is real. Pain, hurting, disappointed, failed. It's just a few ways many people are describing the way they feel over a grand jury's decision to not only charge one former Louisville police officer with three counts of wanton endangerment for firing shots to a neighboring apartment, and to not charge any of the three officers involved with Breonna Taylor's death. Tamika Palmer, Taylor's mother, posting her disappointment on Facebook. Hashtag, the system failed Breonna. You know, it was disappointing. Tamika Palmer was notified about the decision at the same time that America was getting to watch the report of the grand jury being made to the circuit court judge. I think it's a sad thing, and I give my regards to the family of Breonna. I also uh, think it's so sad what's happening with everything about that case. Now Kentucky's governor is calling for transparency of the attorney general's investigation. Put it all online. Provide the facts, the information, and the evidence. And it, it's, it's about trusting the people of Kentucky. I trust them. 
that if they have all the facts, the evidence, and maybe some explanation if needed, that they can process it. In Louisville, Kentucky, I'm Daryl Forges. Time check, 541, still 65 degrees. And next, our local comedian has become one of the most influential Latinos in San Antonio. Last week, we kicked off Hispanic Heritage Month with an article listing 25 influential Latinos here in San Antonio. One of those on the list was local comedian Larry Garza. A comedian for over 15 years, Garza shares his story in the latest Unheard and also speaks about his battle with cancer. Uh, in uh, 2002, I uh, was... Uh, uh, at San Antonio College uh, in uh, taking their film, uh, radio, television, and film program, uh, where I met the members of uh, my group, Comedia Agogo. And so we started doing uh, sketch comedy at small venues, eventually going to Sam's Burger Joint. And uh, we were basically San Antonio's Saturday Night Live for a really long time. But uh, when I had my second child in 2010, you know, I needed to do more gigs to pay for more pampers and formula. So I started to finally, I finally had the courage to do a solo standup. And so I started doing standup, you know, by myself in 2010 and you know, I've been doing it ever since. And it's been about 18, 18 years of me doing it and I still get nervous. So it doesn't get any easier. So that's the, that's what drives you. You know, that's what pushes you because if you're not nervous that means you don't care in 2016 i was diagnosed with uh stage four uh renal cell carcinoma which is uh kidney cancer uh originally it was in my kidney and my lung uh, uh and then later that year it uh, moved to my brain then in 2019 it moved back to my left kidney and then it came back this past may I had to get cancer again so right now i'm in immunotherapy it's been it's been a I have a really good support system. Being uh, at the Hano specifically means a lot to, to me because we are of this land. You know, we, we didn't cross any border. And what, what's the cliche? We didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. We stayed in this area and everything formed around us. Being uh, influential uh, uh, Hispanic, Latinx, Latino, Chicano, whatever you want to call it, uh, really means a lot to me because I know that I represent a lot of people, especially in San Antonio, that don't fit that mold that the country feels that uh, we are. That was Larry Garz. You can read more about this story on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for that feature. Well, happening this weekend, District 5 City Councilman Shirley Gonzalez is trying to get more people to fill out the census by offering them free tacos. Tomorrow, District 5 is holding a Census Action Day. Arizona Cafe will offer free tacos if you come fill out your 2020 census form. This is happening at the Las Palmas Field Office on Castroville Road. It starts at 9 in the morning on Saturday and goes until noon. Let's check, check traffic right now, see how things are looking out there. With Officer Nick Solis, 547, what's the latest, Nick? Is it a taco kind of morning? Oh my goodness, yes, look at all that green on the screen. You got time to stop for a taco, kalashi, pit stop, honey butter chicken biscuit, everything right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Things are looking good as we speak, as I speak. Okay, look at these drive times. Eastbound I-10 from FM 46 to 1604, 38 minutes. Looks like a big number, but that's actually a really good time. And you got I-10 eastbound from northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 12 minutes. Really good times there. Taking a look outside at 410 at Fredericksburg right now. The traffic is flowing smoothly in those east and westbound lanes there. This going towards the airport, that going back towards 151. Things look good on 410 and Fredericksburg. Usually does start getting clogged up, though those eastbound lanes at around 615, 630. I just right. love how Nick goes through the whole menu for breakfast. I know. <laughs> yes. It's not a we bad thing. We have tacos, thing. honey butter chicken biscuits, kolaches. No, it's quite a menu. Uh, this, Mike, is like, this is like the, the picnic game. He said tacos and kolaches. You've added chicken biscuit to it. And Sarah. Mm -hmm. I think we might be hungry. Definitely hungry today. Egg McMuffin. Ooh, sauce Ooh. McMuffin with egg. Oh, man. This can yeah, keep donuts. going. <laughs> hey, one want. of the two of you, go get breakfast, will you please? 
Okay. One of y'all. I'm not committing to anything right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love this picture and beautiful view of Old Glory, of course, flying at half staff in honor of the death of uh, Justice Ginsburg. But uh, boy, it's always great to see the American flag. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And uh, not a bad view this morning. It looks like there may be trying to be a little bit of fuzz around some of the, the cameras. It's not or some of the lights because it's not quite as as crisp out there. I mean, the humidity is still very low, but relative to the temperature is kind of getting up and that's why we've been dealing with some of that fog off to the east. Now, high temperatures yesterday, 93 in Honda, really hot, but uh, 86 here in in town, 87 in Pleasanton, and we had some low 90s down there to the uh, south and west and we're going for a little bit warmer today. Uh, up by just a couple of degrees up and going for 89 here in town and upper 80s pretty much throughout the rest of the area. And that's going to be the trend over the weekend as well. Then add to that. So we're looking at low 90s over the weekend and also humidity dew points, even though they're in the low 60s right now and are going to stay pleasant today. They're going to be staying up there and coming up. So low temperatures the next couple of mornings are going to be much, much milder and high temperatures in the afternoon will go up and then we'll probably have a bit of a heat index to deal with in the afternoons the next couple of days. And then there's next week. Here's the front moving through on Monday. Dew points drop down and then look at that. We're down in the low 50s. And so that then is going to allow temperatures and, and help temperatures to get much cooler in the mornings by the middle part of next week. So around the country, we're not seeing anything that looks like the big drop in in temperatures that are coming on in here as of yet. But as we go on, like I said, into the weekend, first of all, we stay in the upper 60s tomorrow morning. Same thing Sunday morning. Then here comes by Sunday that cooler air is starting to work its way down in here, and it looks like that the front's going to move through about new about to pardon me about to seven o'clock in the morning and then by afternoon hours will only be up into the mid 70s and then topping off maybe upper 70s about 80 on Monday. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. Right now everything is up there to the north of us. That's kind of the dividing line where these lines are sort of packed together. Then as we again get into the weekend, we warm up, we get some more humidity around here by Saturday, Sunday. We're starting to see this thing bend a little bit and then it really drops down and then there's Monday morning as the front comes on through here and that pulls down some uh, pretty nice fall air for next week. So first few days of fall have been OK, but the first official weekend of fall, well, it's going to be on the warm side. Details today. We're going to be up to 82 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature up to the upper 80s, and that means we're going to see a lot of uh, low 90s in the Rio Grande Valley. But then we go into the weekend and we'll start to see a lot more in the way of some low 90s around here. More humidity, and that holds those low temperatures up in the upper 60s and even the low 70s. But that cold front comes through on Monday. Going to be kind of breezy, nice temperatures. Look at those morning lows, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All in all, not a bad weekend, though. No, not really. It will be, a, like I said, tad warm, mm -hmm. tad humid, too. We're getting spoiled with this week of fall we've had. We deserve it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. After another hot summer, 552, 65 degrees. Well, a game trilogy set in the world of American Mafia has been given a full makeover for a new generation of gamers and games consoles. We'll have a preview next. All these guys in this room, they're here because they have the only thing that matters to me. You know what that is, Tommy? They're loyal. That's right. Live out your fantasies of becoming a made man in Mafia Definitive Edition. Everything I've done, I've done for my family. Mafia The Definitive Edition is a ground up remake of uh, the original Mafia, which came out in 2002. So 18 years later, we've gone back and we completely remade it again from the ground up. We built every asset, um, we did every cinematic, we did all the core gameplay. It's not just about the visuals, although that's a big part of it, but also, you know, the art of storytelling has changed so much since the original game came out. And I think expectations are much higher in terms of what makes a good story and how you tell that story. It still follows the same basic storyline. Um, you're still playing as Tommy Angelo, who's a cab driver that kind of falls in with the mob. Um, the same cast of characters is there. What we have done, though, is we've gone in and we've taken some of the characters that maybe 
didn't get enough attention in the original and we've enhanced their stories. We've expanded upon them a little bit more. We doing this? We doing this. Playing with an actual Sicilian surname in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Rick. Hey, it's time to lace up your shoes for the Head for the Cure Virtual 5K. The race is happening tomorrow. And right now we have that last minute discount code to get $5 off registration. All you need to do is use the code last chance, all one word, all caps. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood anywhere. Then tomorrow, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 a.m. and share your pics. For a link to register, go to ksatcommunity.com. Still ahead on GMSA and your Friday morning, being upbeat is one thing, but if you toss aside challenges others are going through with cheeriness, you may be doing more harm than good. Just ahead, we're gonna take a closer look at what they call toxic positivity. And transcribe right now, 1604 Old Hausman Road. We'll get an update from Officer Nick Solis from the San Antonio Police Department. You're watching GMSA on a Friday. We are getting our first look at a new video of that plane crash at San Marcos Regional Airport. We will have the latest on the collision between the two planes and the investigation in a matter of minutes. A grim new warning from the CDC, upwards of 23,000 deaths over the next three weeks from coronavirus. I'm Alex Crochet in Washington. I'll have details on that, plus an update on the fight for a vaccine. 6 a.m. Looks like a clear sky out there. It's dropped a couple degrees, 63 degrees this morning. It's going to warm up, though, this weekend. Mike will let us know about that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is September 25th. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And it's a beautiful morning outside, but this weekend might warm up a little bit. Yeah, for the first full weekend of fall, meteorologist Mike Osterhage joins us now. Overall, not bad. No, 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 not bad at all. Um, we are going to have temperatures, though, that are going to be about five degrees above normal this weekend. We're going to have a little more humidity to deal with in the mornings and in the afternoons, but we've got a cold front that's going to be moving through to start off your work and school week next week. So uh, right now, one thing we're having to deal with, though, and we haven't seen this uh, in a while, but a little bit of fog. Gonzalez at one mile visibility, Victoria at one mile seven in Beeville, and there may be a hint of it around Castroville as well. And it's because we've got these clear skies that's allowing temperatures to drop down, but those temperatures are kind of meeting up with the dew points and some other factors, and that's why we are seeing some of this fog out there. So uh, 63 degrees this morning, we're going to be uh, seeing just very lovely conditions throughout the rest of today. And uh, we're going to be up to right around the low 80s today at noon and then top off in the upper 80s about normal, maybe a degree or two above that. But again, we are going to be uh, getting warmer this weekend. The fall or the taste of fall, I should say, with that front is going to be coming through about this time Monday morning. Get all the details. How cool is it going to be getting? Now, it's fun to say, isn't it? How cool is it going to be getting next week? Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis, I don't see anything on the map. Any problems out there? No, right now up to a good start on Friday, okay. Mike. Uh, if you're heading out to work right now, expect no. Uh, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good in the city. A lot of green there on the highways. No heavy pockets of traffic, so that's always good. Let's take a look at the trans guide here. This is I-10 at Presa right now. Traffic is very light not moderate yet things are looking good if you are headed this way just remember everyone please uh, wear your seat belt go to the speed limit and please get to work safely mark sarah back to you thank you nick well this morning we are getting a first look at the video of a plane crash in san marcus we first told you about this story on ksat yesterday evening authorities say two single engine planes collided when they are they were trying to land at the regional airport you can see one of the planes flipped over Officials say three people were injured and two were sent to the hospital. The Federal Aviation Administration and National Transportation Safety Board are investigating. This is a developing story, and you can follow the, for, you can follow the updates right here on KSAT.com. Overnight protests continued around the nation in response to the decision in the case of the Breonna Taylor killing. This is video from Louisville, Kentucky, where Taylor was shot and killed during a raid on her apartment back in March. Protesters calling for reforms to change what they call racist policing. The demonstrations went past the implemented curfew in the city. Louisville city officials say several people have been detained, but the protests remain peaceful in that city. 
Following the protests in Kentucky and around the nation, Governor Greg Abbott proposed new measures for Texas yesterday. If passed by lawmakers in 2021, the measures would create felony level offenses for causing injury or destroying property during what is deemed, quote, a riot. Blocking hospital entrances, using lasers or striking officers would also see an increase in punishment. Governor Abbott also proposed a new felony charge for people who may not be present during the riots, but may aid the demonstrators with funds or organizational assistance. Well, here in San Antonio, local activist Valerie Reifert says she has helped organize protests, but has never condoned rioting because she says it distracts from the message. However, she says not acknowledging the reasoning behind protesting is not helpful. This keeps happening generation after generation and Governor Abbott is choosing to turn a blind eye as to why people are out here, you know, doing these things. She feels legislation needs to be created to better protect the public against officers who abuse power. Again, the proposals Governor Abbott announced yesterday would still need to be passed by the House and Senate, then signed off by the governor himself. New this morning, a man is in the hospital recovering from a gunshot wound. Police say the man was shot in the 4300 block of Avenida Prima around midnight. That's near Perrin Vital and Thousand Oaks Drive on the northeast side. The victim told police he was walking down the street when he says a woman shot him in the leg. Police say they do not have a suspect description at this time. The man was taken to Bamsey and is expected to recover. Let's talk pandemic. Lo local health officials reporting 177 new cases of COVID in Bear County, five new deaths. That brings the seven day average up to 153 cases per day. Metro Health reporting 231 people in the hospital, 87 in ICU, 36 are on ventilators. New data from the Texas Education Agency is showing COVID-19 cases in public schools. The TEA has reported more than 6,000 total cases in students and staff across the state, with some at the three largest districts here in San Antonio. San Antonio ISD has reported one student case and 16 among staff. Northeast ISD has reported 11 cases among students and 14 in their staff. And Northside ISD has reported nine student cases and 35 staff cases. While some teachers are concerned, Metro Health's director says the numbers are encouraging. All of the students in that class exposed all of the teachers. Uh, to me, that's really dangerous. It is maybe not as, as high a risk to go into a school as, as some people had feared at the beginning of all this. The city announced their own tally as Metro Health combs through the data. It is different than what the TEA reports with 20 students and 32 staff cases confirmed in the area. A new EMT program at Edison High School right here in the Alamo City offering new career opportunities to seniors. New course offered to seniors called Emergency Medical Technician Basic. There are 17 students enrolled in the new course. Deborah Ramirez, a retired firefighter paramedic, will be assisting with skills training. Students learn how to care for all types of patients. They'll be learning trauma care, you know, working with um, patients that stabbings, shootings, uh, car accidents, but they'll also be learning how to care for patients who are maybe having a heart attack, severe respiratory distress. They may be going out on COVID patients when they graduate. I want to get experience and um, figure out what I want to do. And I think this is like a great step because it uh, leads to a certification. Ramirez says this course will open many doors for students. Next course starts on October 5th. Well, nationally, the CDC is predicting that 23,000 Americans could die from COVID-19 in the next three weeks. Meanwhile, the debate over when a vaccine could be ready continues in Washington. ABC's Alex Perche has more. Good morning. The president's promised a vaccine by election day, but that might not mesh with new possible guidelines from the FDA. Now states worried that politics are interfering with science are taking matters into their own hands. Heading into the weekend, a grim new forecast from the CDC. As many as 23,000 more coronavirus deaths by October 17th. 33 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico are seeing an increase in cases. In the nation's capital, after touting a coronavirus vaccine by Election Day, President Trump is now threatening to reject stricter FDA safety standards that could slow the release of a vaccine, once again undermining his own health officials. Well, I tell you what, we're looking at that. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. Dr. Anthony Fauci coming to the FDA's defense. I'm 
need to rely on an organization that I have trusted and have done very, very well for decades, and that's the FDA. So if they come out and say, this is the way we should do it, I got your back on that. The FDA declined to comment on the president's threat, but testifying on Capitol Hill this week, the FDA commissioner was adamant. Our thorough review processes and science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone to change that. And overseas, France is now seeing a record increase in daily cases. Britain is seeing an all-time high in new infections. And in Finland, officials are using dogs at airports to sniff out passengers that might be infected. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 609 and 63 degrees. Well, if you're looking for a place to eat this weekend here in San Antonio, why not go to one that got a perfect score? on their latest health inspection. We will have best of behind the kitchen door later on. Even though summer is gone, the pandemic, it's still here. What we learn, what, what will we learn, what a psychiatrist says we should do in the new season to keep ourselves safe, the virus. And outside with live cam, it's a nice morning. Mike says be on the lookout for some fog and then things are going to warm up. He'll get us updated on the first full weekend of fall and he'll talk about that next cold front. Welcome back. Fall is in the air and it marks the start of another season where we are still dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. And as it continues, despite the reopenings, doctors say there is still a threat to the public's mental health. Dr. Croft says you should talk to your doctor if you start feeling the seasons change your mood and behavior. That is called seasonal affective disorder and can still affect people here, even though he says it's rare in South Texas. He also says the flu season could pose another risk for a person's mental health. He says it can be another thing we have to deal with and adding more to our plate can make us feel more irritable and frustrated. High school football continues this week right here in South Texas. And remember, you can get the latest big game coverage all weekend on KSAT and KSAT.com. Watch the night beat for the latest scores from around the San Antonio metro area. Find schedules, rankings, and highlights on KSAT.com. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. If pro football is more your speed, both the Cowboys and Texans play this weekend. Cowboys play the Seahawks Sunday, 325 in Seattle. And the Texans play the Steelers at noon on Sunday in Pittsburgh. If you want the best sports coverage in town, be sure to tune in to KSAT's Instant Replay. You can get the latest national, regional, and local sports coverage. Tune in every Sunday evening at 11 p.m. sharp right here on KSAT 12. It's been a pretty easy morning for traffic officer Nick. How's it look? Still looking good right now. If you are on the way to work, expect a smooth ride because things look good right now. We're up to a great start for Friday. Seriously, take a look at these drive times here. So if you're eastbound 151, 1604 to Highway 90, you got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound, 1604 to IH 35, 10 minutes still looking really good over there in those areas. All right, taking a look at 37 and Southeast Military right now. Look at that traffic flowing great, very smooth. Um, looks good there. So um, all around the city right now, expect a smooth commute to work has our bus stop forecast. Yes, indeed. A beautiful morning. You know, some folks, you may want a little bit of a kind of a light jacket this morning. We're in the low 60s right now. You know, there's a couple of clouds here and there, and that's about it. And then later on this afternoon, beautiful day, big warm up throughout the morning hours, 89 degrees later on with plenty of sunshine. The next couple of mornings aren't going to be quite as pleasant as what they are, as what it is right now, I should say, and what they have been the past couple of days, just because we have some more humidity coming on in here. We are at about the halfway point of the moon, as you can see from this beautiful picture. Full moon is going to be a week from yesterday on October the 1st. What a great shot. Thank you. I love it. Sudden craving for a slice of moon pie. <laughs> It sounds kind of good too, even for breakfast. Thank you for the case at any uh, dining suggestion as well. So uh, look outside again, not not too bad out there. As far as you know, the equinox, the official start of fall was a couple of days ago on the 22nd. However, we weren't at equal night, 12 hours daylight, 12 hours of night quite then. It was 722, 729, even today. The sunrise 724 says it's 726 and there are a couple of seconds thrown on in there as well. But then finally tomorrow 
is the day of the equal night. I think it's difference by maybe three seconds or something like that. And the reason for that is a lot of times the it's the light bends. It gets refracted by the atmosphere, so you start to see it before the sun actually comes up and you start to see it or continue to see it even as the sun goes down just a little bit. So that's one of the reason why it the actual sunrise doesn't match up with the date of the equinox, but when it actually passes over the equator, it happened a couple of days ago. 54 degrees right now in Comfort, as well as in Bernie, Kerrville. Nice, pleasant, cool temperatures out there. 60 Randolph and Stinson. And notice how we've got dew point temperatures, the same as the air temperature. For instance, Randolph, Stinson. You got to watch out for a little bit of fog to try and form up because we do have some clear skies out there and uh, not much of a breeze either. So we've got already fog around Gonzales, Victoria, half mile visibility, hint of it in Beeville, a hint of it in Castorville as well. So humidity is going to be going up over the next couple of days. That's going to hold low temperatures up, make it feel warmer in the afternoon. Then the humidity drops off as we go on into the middle part of next week, and we're watching this colder area of air up here to the north. Now, it's not an Arctic blast by any means, but that will continue to drop down here and move through. It looks like right now the timing on the front is going to be about 7 o'clock. So right around this time, Monday morning, we're going to be watching that front as it progresses southward. And then throughout the day, we're going to be staying. That uh, has us in the early afternoon at 73 degrees, and then I think we'll top off maybe up to 80 on Monday afternoon, 82 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature today up to 89. Again, a lot of sunshine. Humidity is still going to be pretty nice today, but then we get into the next uh, couple of days and humidity goes up. So that's going to help to hold temperatures up in the morning in the upper 60s, low 70s, low 90s, a little more humidity out there. Then that cold front moves on through Monday morning. It's going to be nice, kind of breezy in behind the front. Beautiful, refreshing. Open up the windows. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I haven't. I, I can't remember the last time I did that. I know. Yeah. Are we allowed to do that? Wait, they open? I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mike. Right now, six night. Your window. What's that? I said put a mask over your window. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Six nineteen, sixty three degrees. Well, dogs are being trained to sniff out those who may be positive for the coronavirus and not even know it. Find out more in today's GMA first look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. This is an important message for all current and former Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts of America has declared bankruptcy. If you were sexually abused in scouting, you could receive compensation. But you must file a claim in the bankruptcy case by November 16th, 2020. You may file a sexual abuse claim regardless of your current age or the year the sexual abuse occurred. For more information, visit officialbsaclaims.com or call 866-907-2721. Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. Fight. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Sore throat, fever, cough, sinus pressure, chest congestion, sinus congestion, music and body pain, all in one. Did you really need the caps lock? Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. In this morning's GMA First Look, call them COVID canines. Finland's Helsinki Airport says these dogs are trained to sniff out COVID-19. Now, here's how the airport says the trial works. A traveler will swipe their skin with a wipe. It's put in a jar, and in a second room, a dog will sniff it. The trainers in Finland say the dog will have an answer in just 10 seconds. Though it may be different in the real world, something American doctors are looking at, too. Because even lab-run COVID tests can produce false positives or false negatives. We're starting to look at if dogs can detect an odor associated with COVID-19. So will dogs like these ever be used at airports here in America? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what officials here are saying right now. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York.
It's Friday time for best of behind the kitchen door. Perfect restaurant scores from around the Alamo City, according to Metro Health and some of the latest perfect scores go to McAllister's Deli at 5880 Days of Olive Road there on the northwest side. Also Smashing Crab at 8910 Bandera Road. Moving along, we have Anthony's Tex-Mex to go 4942 Woodstone Drive. We also have a perfect score at El Mirasol at 13489 Blanco Road. And finally, there are two dough locations in San Antonio. One's at Blanco 410. This is the one downtown. Dough Pizzeria 518 South Alamo Street also aced their latest health inspection. Congratulations. If your establishment got a perfect score in the last 30 days, let me know. Send me an email at BKD at ksat.com. Sarah. Thank you, Mark. Well, in your morning consumer news, the FDA says it is investigating a so-called Benadryl challenge on TikTok. It's where teenagers in the challenge are encouraged to take large doses of over-the-counter allergy of the allergy drug. According to the FDA, teens have reportedly ended up in the emergency rooms with some serious injuries and some may have even died. The FDA warns that taking too much Benadryl can lead to severe health problems, even death. It says it has contacted TikTok and is urging the app to remove videos of the challenge from its platform. Uber is tightening its safety protocols to include mask verification for riders. If a rider is flagged for not wearing a mask, they will be required to take a mask selfie before their next trip. The mandatory mask policy went into effect in May. Since then, Uber has removed more than 1,200 riders in the U.S. and Canada for not following it. Uber says drivers can also choose to cancel a trip if a rider isn't wearing a mask. Zoom is making their app more accessible to those with disabilities. New features have been put in place for the hearing impaired and visually impaired. One feature allows users to reorder Zoom video chat windows. Zoom says this allows users to place windows with sign language interpreters directly by whoever's speaking. And the app has expanded its keyboard shortcuts and changed its interface so those who are losing their vision can log in without a mouse. 625 and 63 degrees. So glad you're starting your Friday with us here on GMSA. Still to come, we continue to learn more about influential Latinos in San Antonio for Hispanic Heritage Month. In our next half hour, we'll hear from comedian Larry Garza. And you may not know it, but toxic positivity. Yep, it's a thing. We learn what it is and why it can be harmful to your personal relationships. And Trans Guide will see how positive things are on the roads with Officer Nick Solis. He says he never saw it coming. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A man shot on the northeast side of town told police he has no idea who fired the shot. I'll tell you more about it. Protests continue across the country after the case of Breonna Taylor, and in some cities, protesters and counter protesters, protesters have turned violent. If you're just now waking up outside with live cam, Mike says be on the lookout for perhaps some fog in some places. It's a beautiful morning out there so far, and Mike says we are also due for a bit of a warm up. Just forget it's the first full weekend of fall. Friday, September 25th, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is beautiful outside, but I think we've become a little spoiled the last couple of days. I, like yesterday, I spent the evening on my porch reading. Yeah, that's, you know, that's just... wonderful to be outside in weather like this. And yeah, we are kind of spoiled because we are seeing some below normal temperatures right now. Uh, it's going to be somewhat of a reality check this weekend. And then <laughs> just wait till next week. All right, we're at 63 right now. The dew point is at 60. That's where it's really nice when you get at 60 or below for a dew point temperature. Don't have much wind to speak of. And with that um, kind of configuration, if you will, first of all, we don't have any heat index to deal with, but with these uh, dew points up in the uh, low 60s here off to the east of us and temperatures about the same, we're starting to see some fog. And so, uh, Gonzalez, you've been seeing a lot of fog earlier this morning, throughout the morning, I should say. Victoria also has uh, visibility down to a quarter mile in LaGrange. So just kind of watch out in eastern counties for the next, uh, say, hour or so until the, the sun comes up. And it's still about an hour until the sun comes up, 7 uh, 24 this morning. So a couple of clouds around this morning. Coolish, very nice out there. And then later on today, sunny, upper 80s, just a great looking day. 
The weekend, low 90s and low temperatures will be in the upper 60s and even low 70s. A little more humidity as well, but then that's all going to change first part of next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis and there have been a couple of glitches here and there, but anything now? Right now, things were looking good, Mike, but we have this accident okay. here. Yeah, northbound I-35 at Judson Road. We have an accident there. Vehicles uh, got into a crash on the left shoulder of those northbound lanes just before Judson Road. Uh, SAPD is on scene. Hopefully this doesn't cause too much traffic buildup, and I'll keep you updated on it as much as I can. All right, taking a look at 1604 in Bandera right now. Those northbound lanes at 1604 not getting clogged up yet, so you still got time to make it there before they get all clogged up here coming around 7 a.m. 410 at Fredericksburg. Look at that. That looks good right now. And 37 at Cesar Chavez looking great and flowing smooth. All right, everyone, please remember, wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit, and get to work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police say so far they have no help in solving an overnight shooting on the northwest side of town. They say the victim told them he has no idea where the shots came from or who would shoot him. Our Katrina Weber has that story live from downtown. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this happened as he was taking a walk through a neighborhood. Well, that's what both he and a companion told police, that they were walking in a neighborhood off Thousand Oaks Drive. It's actually on the northeast side of town uh, when someone took aim at him. Now, police say that they found the victim who's in his teens or early 20s in the 4300 block of Avenida Prima. However, he told them that he had been shot on a different street in that area. He was hit in his leg and rushed to a hospital, but it does not appear that he suffered any life-threatening injuries. The police say, again, neither he nor the uh, companion he was with, the woman he was with, was able to offer a description of the shooter. So again, they are starting from ground zero in trying to figure out who was responsible. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, protests continued around the country overnight in the aftermath of the Breonna Taylor case. But unlike Louisville, Kentucky, some protests turned violent. This is video from Seattle, Washington, where officials say fires broke out overnight during the demonstrations. And in Los Angeles, California, officials say at least, at least one person was taken to the hospital after a truck drove through the crowd, knocking a protester to the ground. That person's condition is unclear at the moment. There are now 39 days until Election Day. Joe Biden picking up the endorsement of nearly 500 retired military and national security officials, many of whom have long avoided politics. Meanwhile, the president faces pushback from Congress over his refusal to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. ABC's Kenneth Moten has more. Overnight, President Trump on the campaign trail in Florida, rallying supporters in Jacksonville. Uh, we're unified. But in Washington, unanswered questions and growing concern after the president refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election. His press secretary was asked for a clarification. But, but I ask you a very works. direct and very simple question. If the president loses this election, will this White House, will this president assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? It's a very simple question. The, the, president, since, uh, the president will accept the results of a free and fair election. But President Trump once again stoking doubt about the fairness of the election. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. I don't, I don't know that it can be. We have to be very careful with the ballots. The ballots, that's a whole big scam. Democrats on the attack. That may be what his friend Putin does in Russia. You are not in North Korea. You are not in Turkey. You are in the United States of America. It is a democracy. Republicans also speaking out. We've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington was selected for a second term in 1792. The Senate unanimously passing a resolution Thursday reaffirming its commitment to a peaceful transition after the election. The FBI director told Congress there's been no evidence of widespread voter fraud. We have not seen historically uh, any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort uh, in a major election, uh, whether it's by mail or, or otherwise. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, a hearing is scheduled today in Illinois to determine if a 17-year-old accused of killing two protesters in Kenosha, Wisconsin, will be sent to the state of Wisconsin for trial. Kyle Rittenhouse was arrested in his home in Illinois a day after the protest in Kenosha on August 25th. 
If he goes to trial in Wisconsin, he could be facing charges with a penalty of life in prison. The director of the World Health Organization says President Trump's decision to pull out of the WHO will hurt the U.S. A director of the World Health Organization told Time magazine he was surprised by the announcement and that there had been no hint the U.S. was planning a withdrawal. The move does not take effect until next July. Democratic presidential hopeful, or rather candidate, Joe Biden says he will reverse the decision if elected. After lying in repose for the past two days, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol today. Her casket will arrive in National Statuary Hall at the Capitol building this morning. She will be the first woman in history to lie in state. Be sure to watch GMSA at 9 today where we will take an ABC special report honoring Justice Ginsburg. Well, last week, we kicked off Hispanic Heritage Month with an article listing 25 influential Latinos here in San Antonio. One of those on the list was local comedian Larry Garza. A comedian for over 15 years, Garza shares his story in the latest Unheard and also speaks about his battle with cancer. Uh, in uh, 2002, I uh, was... Uh, uh, at San Antonio College uh, in uh, taking their film, uh, radio, television, and film program, uh, where I met the members of uh, my group, Comedia Agogo. And so we started doing uh, sketch comedy at small venues, eventually going to Sam's Burger Joint. And uh, we were basically San Antonio's Saturday Night Live for a really long time. But uh, when I had my second child in 2010, you know, I needed to do more gigs to pay for more pampers and formula. So I started to finally, I finally had the courage to do a solo stand-up. And so I started doing stand-up, you know, by myself in 2010. And you know, I've been doing it ever since. And it's been, what, 18, 18 years of me doing it. And I still get nervous. So it doesn't get any easier. So that's the, that's what drives you. You know, that's what pushes you, because if you're not nervous, that means you don't care. In 2016, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four uh, renal cell carcinoma, which is uh, kidney cancer. Uh, originally, it was in my kidney and my lung. Uh, uh, and then later that year, it uh, moved to my brain. Then in 2019, it moved back to my left kidney, and then it came back this past May. I had to get cancer again, so right now I'm in immunotherapy. It's been, it's been a... I have a really good support system. Being uh, at the Hano specifically means a lot to, to me because we are of this land. You know, we, we didn't cross any border. And what, what's the cliche? We didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. We stayed in this area and everything formed around us. Being uh, influential uh, uh, Hispanic, Latinx, Latino, Chicano, whatever you want to call it, it uh, really means a lot to me because I know that I represent a lot of people, especially in San Antonio, that don't fit that mold that the country feels that uh, we are. Latest in our unheard segment here on KSAT. Well, happening this weekend, District 5 City Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez is trying to get people to fill out the census by offering free tacos as an incentive. Tomorrow, District 5 holding a Census Action Day. Arizona Cafe will offer free tacos if you come in and fill out your 2020 census form. It's happening at the Las Palmas Field Office on Castroville Road. It starts at 9 in the morning and is planned to go through noon. The Head for the Cure 5K is happening tomorrow as well. And right now we have a last minute discount code to get $5 off the registration. All you need to do is use the last code, quote, last chance, all in all one word in all caps. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood. Then tomorrow, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 a.m. and share your pictures. For a link to register, just go to ksatcommunity.com. And good luck to all you runners, walkers, or whatever you planning are planning to do. Right now it's 641, 63 degrees. Well, being upset is one thing, but if you toss aside challenges, others are going through with cheeriness, you may be doing more harm than good. After the break, we will take a closer look at toxic positivity. 
According to experts from CNN, not wanting to be surrounded by too much positivity is a natural healthy response to these extraordinary times. Toxic positivity can happen in some of the least expected ways. For example, when a new parent is exhausted from changing diapers or the unusual feeding times, they may not want to hear, oh, you'll miss it one day. It's not that people disagree, but that they're looking for a reality check. But don't think being cheerful is a bad thing either. Either, a positive attitude can be a gift to those around you. Just don't let it take the place of listening thoughtfully to others' experiences. It's also important to know that toxic positivity doesn't show up in how we treat others. Many people put intense pressure on themselves to ignore difficult emotions, too. That can cause psychological and physical harm. Experts say it's all about balance. The lesson of toxic positivity is not about the right or the wrong way to feel. Instead, learning to listen to yourself and others. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. 645. We're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis. Right. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Right now, uh, we have a major accident, uh, 35 at Judson Road. Looks like it's causing a lot of traffic buildup here. So this is northbound I-35 at Judson here. Let's go straight to the Trans Guide. Here it is uh, right there on those northbound lanes, already causing moderate to heavy traffic up there. So if you are going northbound 35, uh, expect a delay from O'Connor to uh, 1604 there as this accident is causing some delays in the traffic. Thank you, Nick. And Mike, that picture behind you looks like something unreal, like a painting. It, it, it does. And it's just, I mean, just looking at it is just kind of soothing. And they're Matagora. Ah. I know. I just kind of want to chill out with that one. So thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. And here, there, we're now starting to see the uh, early signs of the sunrise there. Who's over there? Could you flip that, please, for me? Just so I can see. There we go. Thank you very much. All right, beautiful out there. And by the way, we do have a, a moderate amount of ragweed showing up and a low amount of mold in the atmosphere. And the updated uh, allergen count is going to be coming out in about uh, maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. All right, visibility, we're still looking at some fog. Now it's improved slightly in Gonzales as well as the Grange, but Victoria is at three quarters of a mile. And that's because we've got, yeah, clear skies, uh, some beautiful temperatures. But as the temperatures have been dropping down, getting close to those dew points, that's why we've been seeing some of that fog off there to the east. Once again, other than the leftovers of beta, which is actually still kind of, uh, if you look at the uh, Hurricane Center's website, it still shows that on the map. But there is nothing going on anywhere in the tropics, and that was after we had that I mean, just everything at 1.5 named storms in the Atlantic Basin just a few weeks ago, and all those disturbances were coming off the coast of Africa. And again, there is nothing out there as of right now. But of course, we do still have just over two months to go in the hurricane season. It goes through the end of November, starts the 1st of June, goes through the end of November. As far as temperatures up there in Canada, obviously there's nothing that is really any sort of a gee whiz. Yeah, you've got some freezing readings, but that is to be expected, although we will get a little bit of those cooler temperatures coming on in here by Monday. For the weekend, though, preceding it, it's going to start to warm up. We are going to have warmer low temperatures staying in the upper 60s for the next couple of mornings because we're going to see some more humidity around here, so that's not going to allow temperatures to drop down. But then by Sunday, we start to see cooler. Now, again, it's not an Arctic blast, but cooler temperatures starting to work their way south. And that will be overnight Sunday into Monday. So at this time, Monday, we're going to be looking at the... and pinpointing the timing, the exact timing of the front moving on through where you live. And it's going to take temperatures, which will be mild starting off and then will only stay in maybe mid upper 70s, low 80s for some folks. So a lot of areas, especially up in the hill country, are going to be staying right around the upper 70s, mid upper 70s on Monday. Here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. That high is in control right now. That helps to warm things up just a little bit, but we start to see that kind of kink in the uh, jet stream up there and then we get the big roller coaster moving on in and that's going to be pulling down some beautiful weather for most all of next week. It's going to stay nice and cool in the mornings, pleasant in the afternoons. Could use some rain because there's none of that in the forecast. 82 degrees today, mostly sunny skies at noon. High temperature into the upper 80s. Pleasant as far as the humidity is concerned. And then we go into the next couple of days and a little milder in the mornings. A little more humidity, a little more humidity in the afternoon, low 90s, but then the front's going to move through again about this time Monday morning. Oh, that's going to be nice.
nice. A pair of 59s there. Oh, looking forward to that. All right, the payoff is coming. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 649, 63 degrees. Well, many parents are not thrilled about online learning, but join us tomorrow on GMSA where we see how it may benefit your kids outside of the classroom. And outside right now with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up on this early Friday morning. Another beauty of a sunrise to start our weekend. We're going to check traffic one more time with Officer Nick Solis from the San Antonio Police Department. Time saver traffic still to come. Coming up on GMA, protests growing overnight, not just in the streets of Louisville, but across the nation as the fallout from the Breonna Taylor decision intensifies. We're going to have the latest this morning as the Kentucky governor has called on the state's attorney general to release all details of the grand jury report. We will discuss right here on GMA. A walk through a northeast side neighborhood ended with a ride to the hospital for one man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. He was shot late last night, although the case is still a bit of a mystery this morning. The police found that victim who's in his teens or early 20s in the 4300 block of Avenida Prima near Thousand Oaks shortly before midnight. But he told them he actually was shot as he walked on a different street nearby. The victim was hit in his leg and taken to a hospital. The police say he was with a woman at the time, but neither she nor the victim was able to offer a description of the shooter. For now, investigators seem to be there on their own when it comes to solving this case. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Heads up, still a reminder, there's uh, still time to get that discount for the Head for the Cure 5K this weekend. Race is tomorrow. You can get $5 off registration by using Last Chance. Uh, that's all one word in all capital letters. For a link to register, just go to ksatcommunity.com. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking, or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood. And then be sure to join us tomorrow in GMSA to see how the annual event turns out. It's about five till seven right now. And uh, Nick joins us now. Just saw some flashing lights on I-35 near Judson, Nick. Yeah, right now this accident's definitely uh, clogging things up. Backing traffic up on northbound 35 from Randolph Boulevard all the way through Judson Road. Let's take a look at it right here. So as you see there, the right shoulder is, uh, is where the accident is. Traffic is getting stalled, like I said, all the way backed up to Randolph. Uh, on 35, so expect a delay if you're heading towards 1604 from 35 North northbound. Mike? Thank you, sir. What a spectacular picture. Look at that. Sun's going to be coming up in about uh, half an hour and Oh my goodness, what a great looking day. We do have a little bit of fog off to the east, Gonzales as well as Victoria. We're down to 62 degrees right now. Look at that, 53 in comfort, 54 up the road, Kerrville, as well as at Bernie Stage, and we'll make it up to 89 today. Good looking day, humidity is going to be okay. And then a little warmer, more humid this weekend, but we have that front moving through on Monday, and that's going to give us some beautiful fall weather by Monday. And I'm going to try and Get back to the beautiful sunrise. Picture. Oh, it's just awesome, isn't it? Yep. Everyone have a great Friday morning. And a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here in a couple hours for GMSA at 9.